Thomas Storm and Thomas Laval is going to miss the World Cup just after winning the Champions League and becoming one of the best in Europe in his position. That was totally brutal. So there was nothing left for Laval but to make the toughest decision in his career. The Italian national team manager Roberto De Zerbi hosted Laval to offer a spot in his team. I know the situation you are having with the English Football Association and especially with the head coach. So maybe you can consider joining the Italian national team. That was a shocking offer and at the same time a savior for Laval's international career. He waited too long, so he decided to take the offer and represent the squadra Azzurra, just like his current manager Diago Mota did. But according to FIFA's regulations, player needs to be living at least 5 years in a country he wants to represent, and he should not play a single competitive match for a previous national team. Laval appeared only in a friendly matches for England. and did spent already four years in Italy, so he decided to stay one more season at Juventus to match all the criteria for a nation switch. Without Laval, current European champions England failed the World Cup, losing to Portugal in the quarterfinals. Though West Italy, Norway unexpectedly knocked them out in the same phase. But there were more surprises to come, this time on the club level. All of a sudden, Juventus board decided to cash out on their success and saw the core of the players who made it possible. Dusan Vlahovic joined Liverpool for almost 80 million euros. Team's captain Bremer left for Milan, Sule signed for Bayern for 60 million euros and Manuel Locatelli left the club as a free agent. To fill these gaps, Juventus signed two very experienced players in Mazraoui as a backup for Malo Gusto and Subimendi as a direct replacement for Locatelli. Wilfried Nonto joined the squad as a backup in flanks, but the main signing of the window was an Italian rising star Antonio Martinelli. Only 18 years old striker, he will most probably be the second choice after Moise Kin. As a result of this transformation, Thomas Laval has become the captain of Bianconeri. The season started with a game against Real Sociedad for the UEFA Super Cup. Juventus dominated that game as anticipated. Thomas Laval got himself a brace, scoring the second goal from Martinelli's assist. That was enough to win another trophy with Juventus, this time as a captain of the team. In the Champions League, Juventus and Barca were drawn in the same group again. The first game at the Allianz Stadium started with the Barcelona's advantage until the 25th minute when Gavi picked up a straight red for not a very harsh tackle to be honest. Anyways, with a man advantage, the old lady managed to score just once. In the 65th minute, after a breakthrough run, Moiskin set the final score. First game and first win for Juve in the Champions League. The second win came shortly after that. They beat Belgian Ghent. In the Serie A, Juve took a solid start as well, becoming first in the table after 10 games. Thomas Laval was the genuine leader of the team with almost 1 goal contributions per match. But soon their form started to decline and against Milan at the San Siro they suffered a loss with a minimal score of 1-0, which could have a big impact on the title race. In the Champions League as well, Bianconeri faced big problems in the match against Ajax at the Johan Cruyff Arena. A disallowed goal and a lot of bottled chances in the first half due to a poor finishing. The second half was much worse and the only shot from Juventus was in the last minute of the game. As a result, only a single point for Juventus in Amsterdam. Although Bianconeri took an expected win in the match against Ghent at the Allianz Stadium, only a single goal was scored. With 3 wins and 3 draws, Juve ended up the group stages in the first position, but unfortunately matched up against Liverpool in the round of 16. Meanwhile in the league, 4 teams were in the title race in January after 18 games. Thomas Laval slowed down his productivity up front and that became one of the main reasons for Juve's modest results. In the Champions League, there were a huge tension in the second game against Liverpool, as Vlahovic made his return to the Alien Stadium, but this time as the opponent's player. First game finished 3-3. Vlahovic could have scored already in the 11th minute, but Karnas Egi made a huge save. Liverpool's Trafford also were fantastic that night and made a couple of great saves himself. 
match ended without scored goals and went to an extra time. Juventus created their best chance in the 95th minute when Martinelli found himself in the killer position but Trapper denied him with a brilliant save. Just seconds before the final whistle of a match, Carvalho won the ball from the defender, squared it to Vlahovic who put the ball into the net and became a villain for Juve's fan in an instant by celebrating his goal as a madman. Current Champions League winners left the tournament in the round of 16. That was clearly a shock for the fans. And the situation in the league was not better. 8 points behind Milan after 29 games. It seemed that even a miracle would not save the season for Juve. But everything changed in the match against Lazio at the Allianz Stadium. Visitors scored already in the 19th minute, a stunning finish from Cancellieri. And the loss in that game would most probably mean the end of the title race for Juventus. In the beginning of the second half, Juve managed to equalize the score. Antonio Martinelli grabbed the goal from Savio's assist. The old lady were attacking constantly and Thomas Laval almost scored a screamer in the 56th minute. But the hero of that night was Savio, who ended up scoring the winner in the 86th minute to keep Juventus' chances alive in the title race. Four consecutive wins for the old lady and a gap between them and Milan reduced to six points. Juventus got another tough match at the Diego Maradona Stadium, where they outplayed Napoli completely. Quentin Timber scored already in the 12th minute, Antonio Martinelli doubled their lead in the 19th minute, clinching three valuable points for Bianconeri. Before the last fixture, Juventus somehow managed to reduce the margin with Milan down to three points and keep tiny chances for the trophy. But before the last match of the season, they had the cup final to play against Monza, where Juventus was a clear favorite to win. And they did prove it on the pitch. If not the brilliant play from Milan Melier, Monza could have conceded a bunch of goals in that game. In the 25th minute, Thomas Laval finally opened the score after Martinelli's assist to give Juve a lead. In the second half, Milan Melier continued his unbelievable performance between the sticks for Monza, saving each and every attempt from Bianconeri. But sadly for him, that was not enough. Juventus were crowned as the Coppa d'Italia winners and Laval raised yet another trophy as the team's captain. Arguably the most important match of the season took place a couple of days after that final, where Juventus hosted AS Roma and scored in the 35th minute with Martinelli. Near the end of the match Juventus got a free kick 21 meters from the goal but Laval missed the target. Anyways, 5 minutes later, he scored the winning goal after Martinelli's assist. And if Milan lost the game, Juventus had a chance of winning the Scudetto in a playoff tiebreaker. But unfortunately, that did not happen. Milan won the league with 82 points. Despite that fact, Juventus has had one of the most impressive seasons with 4 trophies. Anyways, the main two competitions, they eventually failed to win. Laval finished the season with 40 goal contributions. The breakthrough player of the season was Antonio Martinelli, who overtook starting sport from Moiskin and outscored him as well. There was a clear tension between Laval and the board, especially after the transfer policy they adopted. And as he became eligible for a call out to the Italian national team, Thomas Laval decided to leave Turin permanently. Juve's board were happy with that decision, as they could cash out on him big time. Soon Vincent Company approached Thomas Laval and offered him a contract for Bayern Munich, with guaranteed playtime alongside the best player in his position, Jamal Musiala. The offer were tempting and Thomas Laval decided to take it immediately. His transfer became the biggest in the Bayern Munich history. 150 million euros spent for Laval's arrival and to accumulate that much cash, Bayern had to sell some players. Anyways, a whole new journey for Laval begins in Munich with a game against Eintracht Frankfurt at the Allianz Arena. Surprisingly, Frankfurt took the lead early in the game just after that Bayern started to force the goal but missed a bunch of great chances in the first half. Although Jamal Musiala got the equalizer for Bayern in the 58th minute, Eintracht scored their second of the game right after that and managed to keep the score till the end of the match. Thomas Laval started with a loss at Bayern Munich. 
But soon, he made another long-awaited debut in his career. September 4th, 2031, Thomas Laval is in the starting 11 for Italy in the Euros 2032 qualifiers match against Ukraine. And he looks as motivated as possible. He even scored in the beginning of the match, but the goal was ruled out because of an offside. He was taking the free kicks of the team, acting as a true leader. And his debut was victorious, as the only goal scored by Fabio Miretti was enough for Italy to qualify for the upcoming Euros. In the league, things started to normalize for Bayern soon, and they got an easy win in the Der Klassiker against Borussia Dortmund at the Elias Stadium. Goals from Matti Stell and Jamal Musiala secured all three points for Bayern. In the Champions League match against Rangers, Thomas Laval scored a beautiful finesse in the beginning of the first half to help his team to start the tournament with the win. Laval started to take the role of the leader of the team as well. And in the match against Leipzig, he provided an early assist to Matthias Stell. He was taking all the free kicks in the team and even trying a solo runs, long range shots. He strived to show all his skills and flair and soon he got a brilliant opportunity to do so in the match against his former club Atalanta in the Champions League. Surprisingly, Atalanta was the team who scored first, Iran Kunda on the scoreboard. Bayern Munich managed to pull one back in the beginning of the second half. Matis Tell equalized the score from Laval's assist. But Atalanta was just better that night. They scored three goals in the spare of 15 minutes to kill the game off. Musiala got one back near the end of the match and that was it. An embarrassing loss for Bayern in Bergamo. After 17 games, Bayern was first in the league and Thomas Laval did not need any time for his adaptation to the new reality. 25 goal contributions in 25 games. In the Champions League round of 16, Bayern was matched up against Lazio and the first match in Rome ended up 1-1, so both teams needed a win to progress in the competition. Lazio were very close to scoring the first half, but Cancellieri hit the crossbar. Bayern started the second half aggressively and scored 5 minutes after resuming the match and that goal was enough to beat Lazio. The next opponent was levels above, Barcelona was waiting for Bayern, but historically Barca is not a scary opponent for Munich and they reached semi-finals quite comfortably. This time they faced another Spanish grand, Real Madrid and won the first game at the Allianz Arena 2-1. They went to Madrid with a goal advantage. And to be fair, Bayern were much better that night. Thomas Laval was shining on a pitch, he provided two assists in that game. And with an aggregate score of 4-1, Bayern beat Real Madrid to reach the Champions League final. But just before that game, they need a single point in the match against Borussia Dortmund at the Signal Iduna Park to secure the Bundesliga title. But a loss will guarantee the trophy for Borussia. The winner of the title race will be decided in the last match between the two best teams of the country. A unique opportunity to make the history. Bayern started a match a bit better and had a massive chance to score already in the 8th minute. But Musiala got denied by a post. Eight minutes later, Borussia created a chance themselves and Duranville took it brilliantly, giving the Bees an advantage in the title race. Laval continued to take the responsibility, but again he was bang average from the standards. But in open play, he was unmatched. Another unbelievable through ball to Matisse Tell, one on one with the keeper and an ordinary but invaluable finish from Tell that secured another Bundesliga trophy for Bayern. To win it in front of your rival fans, it should taste twice as sweet. Joshua Kimmich is raising the championship shield for Bayern, first trophy for Laval in Germany. But he has an opportunity to win the second one right away. For his second Champions League trophy, he is going to compete with Mbappe and PSG. An incredible season with 46 goal contributions. The top assist provider award in the Bundesliga can be crowned with the Champions League trophy for Laval, automatically making him one of the favorites of the Ballon d'Or 2032. 
but at first he needs to win it. Bayern Munich had such an incredible first half that night in Gelsenkirchen. Laval could have scored himself from the tight angle. In the 13th minute, Molero missed an amazing chance to open the score for Bayern. 15 minutes later, Matisse Tell got denied by Donnarumma from a close distance, a shambolic miss from the Frenchman. In the second half, everything turned upside down. And Mbappe showed Laval how to execute free kicks. A brilliant goal to give a lead to PSG. 10 minutes later, Mbappe doubled their lead to kill all the hopes of Laval to claim the second Champions League trophy that night. Soon, couple of minutes later, Laval had a massive chance to pull one back, but Donnarumma made yet another save to keep PSG's two goals lead. But the hope was still alive. And in the 81st minute, Laval found Tell in the opponent's box and Bayern got there first of the night. But sadly, it was too little too late. PSG beat Bayern in the Champions League final. And Mbappe outran Laval in the race for the Ballon d'Or. The only thing left for him is to join the Italian national team for the upcoming Euros.